Okay, so in Excel, this time round, I like to have a, a dictionary of, hmm, uh, so, so what I want is, uh, I'm doing the mobile game now, so I see the 456, I'm going to do something slightly more interesting, which is to, to uh, generate the four projectile weapons that the monster will throw at us, right? So, um, uh, weapons, okay, that the monster will throw at us. So, um, mud, right? Something that is kind of uh, doing a little bit of damage. Um, what else? We want, uh, we want, we want, uh, so let me, sorry, insert this here. Mud uh, will be predominantly what the monster will be throwing at us. So let's say that's 40% of the time. Okay. Uh, then the monster will throw little stones. Okay. And uh, the third category might be a spear. All right. And then uh, sword. Okay. The monster will throw sword at us. And that's very damaging, but it cannot be all the time so it will occur uh, very rarely five percent of the time all right uh, and we have stone being uh, another pretty common uh, weapon that the monster will throw at us so 30 percent of the time and that makes up 70 and we have zero point uh, i like something higher so maybe this is 0 0.5 Okay, and this is 0.15. So notice that I'm trying to make the probability figures add up to one, and it is a necessary requirement. Okay, now why do I put probability to the left? It's kind of looking a bit asymmetrical, but because VLOOKUP will always uh, look up the probability first, okay, the cumulative probability on the left side, which is our CDF. So the CDF, the way it goes, remember my uh, caution just now, that we look up require CDF to begin at zero. Okay. And the next one is automatic because we will add, we will add um, the previous CDF, okay, with the, the extent of probability for the previous case. Okay? So then we keep extending and then we are done. Okay, so if you have uh, 10 different kinds of weapons, you can do this uh, addition very easily. You don't have to mentally sum them together. Now, uh, what this does is that uh, if it is, if a rand number is 0 0.13, so it's between 0 and 0 0.5, right? We should be showing mud. Okay, we should be showing mud. Now, um, example, 0 0.13, right? So the way we do VLOOKUP, just an experiment first, I'm not uh, simulating yet, I'm just trying to understand, show you how we understand VLOOKUP. VLOOKUP will supply the given uh, CDF value and then look up against a table. So now just a little bit of detail here, be careful, we do not include the header. And of course our table is arranged in an ascending CDF manner. But it is automatic if you use the formula I showed you because it's adding up, piling up positive probabilities all the time. Okay, so we basically will select this table, just two columns, right? Left hand side always CDF, right hand side always the mat to X value. So in this case, our weapon name. Uh, after selecting the table array for us to for for VLOOKUP to look up, you will always as a habit press F4. So that will change the L2, M5, in my case, to $L, $2, M, $5, because it will lock the formula. Now, in my simple one cell illustration here, this is probably not necessary, but uh, uh, in the actual simulation, which I will do shortly in column N, uh, I'll be repeating this, right? And you don't want the table to start shifting down, and, and that's going to cause a lot of uh, problems, okay? So remember, it's comma two comma one for the remaining two values. And I, just, I, I said that just now without explaining, but here, what it means is that uh, whenever VLOOKUP found a suitable row, it will return the second column value. Okay, so we don't call it the M column because you see M here, but for VLOOKUP, it's a localized environment where we says 
the stone, for example, is in the second column. So as far as simulation goes, it's always comma two, right? And again, as far as simulation goes, we always want VLOOKUP not to match exactly. So you always don't put false, you always put true. What true means is to convert the VLOOKUP's behavior into a sort of a search all right, for the largest CDM value that is uh, not exceeding the given value. So let's try it out and see. Uh, what it means is our given value is 0 0.13, okay? 0 0.13, it's VLOOKUP will start to compare with 0. Is 0, all right, is 0 larger than equal to uh, the given value? No. Keep going. Is 0 0.5 larger than equal to 0 0.13? Yes. So stop. And the previous row will be the selected row. Which column should we go? Second column. So return one. Okay. What happens if we type 0 0.74? So the way it goes is, is 0 greater or equal to 0 0.74? No. 0 0.5? No. 0 0.8? Yes. Stop. The previous row all right, is the selected row. So return the second column. Store. What happens if our value was 0 0.99? Then it goes, let me look up goes, is 0 greater equal to 0.99? No, no, no. 0.95 greater equal to 0.99? No. But I run out of table. So the last uh, fitting row all right, is selected and the second column is returned. So we'll get sort. Okay. And of course, if we change this fixed constant to ran, then we are basically simulated. Okay. So game on so we'll throw the weapons based on vlookup so vlookup we look up a rand value using the table shown press f4 comma two comma one right because one is also true we get stone and we're going to do this for <coughs> two thousand times okay very cheaply available and if you press f9 a few times you see that we have basically uh, obtained into the future 2000 uh, numbers or, or weapons for the monsters to throw okay so if you have 2000 monsters then each one can pick one of these and you will find that the gamer will experience being thrown at with little damage but 50 percent of the time how do we know that Let's do a check. Okay, so we do a sort of a, we can copy the weapons and do a reality check. Okay. So we say um, um, relative frequency. Relative frequency basically is to count, right? So we use count if. Count if we check the entire range of n count and check against the criteria O2. Does it match O2? If it matches, uh, count me in. Okay? So we divide by uh, 2000. That would give us the percentage of occurrences of mud within column N. Yeah? And when we do that, we get 51% and we can then copy and paste. All right? And we get 50%, 30%, which is very, very close. 15% uh, and 4.75%. If you F9 again, you get another bunch that, you know, matches uh, the stated probabilities very, very well. Right? So, safe enough to say that we can, uh, suppose we have a psychological experiment with gamers and found that they, they don't mind being thrown at with little damage, but a lot of times. How, how much of the times? 50% uh, of it. Okay, good. We programmed this in. Right. We have another study that finds that uh, sword is uh, very fearsome. It causes a lot of damage. Uh, gamers do like the challenge, but no more than 5% of the time. Right. So what do you do? Well, you set the percentage to 5% because that's what will make your game psychologically appealing to gamers. 
there's no why. I mean, at least the, the scientific part of the why is very, very complicated, right? But there is result, and we can make use of the result to obtain uh, this kind of outcome, like the sword you know, being thrown once in a while, no more than 5%. Once in a while can be 1%, can be 0.03%, right? But from studies, we find that it's 5%, then that's the answer. You see that? So uh, that is going to allow gamers to have a lot of fun because swords don't occur five times consecutively and then for a thousand times they never appear. But it is being dissipated across uh, all the sequences and then once in a while, once in the blue moon, you get a sword. Right? So there is some kind of analytics that goes on here. We can make use of measurements and then do the results and then do the simulation. So this is guided by uh, both inputs and then we produce outputs. Okay, so with that, we can end this section.